Hi everybody, it's Matt Dubin, candidate for Washington State Representative in the 36th Legislative District. That is Ballard, Queen Anne, Magnolia, and Belltown. I'm back. We are a couple days post-primary and numbers continue to come in. Uh, percentages are holding about the same, uh, but I don't really want to talk about the primary results today. I want to talk about what's going to happen from now through the November 6th general election. We are on the ballot against the incumbent, and we intend to continue running a strong race and um, spreading the message of compassion and inclusiveness, the message of there is no them, which is really the cornerstone of our campaign. So I've received a few complaints or comments that our campaign has um, lacked specifics on some of the issues. I definitely don't think that's true. Uh, I've talked in great detail about specific policy ideas on social media, in our blog, in live events, but understandably not everyone can see everything that I write or say. And so for some people there could be a perception um, that I haven't really discussed specific concrete proposals on the issues that we're talking about, issues that are important to the people of the 36, and I'm talking about homelessness, I'm talking about housing, um, mental health and drug addiction, traffic, education, uh, the environment, a number of issues that are really important to the people of our district and deserve to be addressed in a meaningful and specific way. I think one of the things that people aren't used to and maybe are a little bit troubled or, or confused about my campaign is that I lead with humility. Um, I lead with an acknowledgement that I don't have all of the answers to the problems that we face as a community, but that I believe together we have the resources and the knowledge and the ability to come together and find solutions that actually will work. So what I want to do today is just give you a little bit of background about me and kind of my management style and philosophy about solving problems. Now, I will do future videos on specific issues, and I will talk about specific ideas. Today is really more about my management style, my problem solving style, and how I intend to transition that from my law firm where I am right now to the state legislature. And so, this is really important. The most important factor in setting policy and making decisions about policy is setting a goal. We need to be really clear on what is our goal in any particular practice area. So let me use my law firm as an example. If I have a goal of generating new business for my law firm, I need to do marketing. And so I might make a decision to spend money on TV ads, or I might use social media, or I might do print ads, or I might do um, pay-per-click or something else. There's so many different ways that I can do marketing. But once I make that decision, that's not the end of the analysis. I need to have objectively measurable benchmarks that I can look at the results of what I'm doing and ask myself, are we moving in the direction of my long-term goal? And if we're not, I need to discard whatever it is I'm doing. Without ego, I just need to let it go if it's not working. And so this is something that's lacking in our public policy. For example, with homelessness, we have certain policies right now that I think most people would agree by any objective measure aren't moving us closer to the goal. I guess the first question we really need to ask again is, what is the goal? I think the goal should be ending homelessness. Now, maybe that's optimistic, maybe it's overly aggressive, but I think that should be our goal. And that means not necessarily making homelessness easier or making homelessness less uncomfortable, although our compassion really compels us to try and help in the short term people who are suffering from homelessness. But our overarching goal as a matter of public policy should be 
eliminating homelessness in our community. Once we all agree on the goal, then it's pretty easy to look at our current policies and say, are they bringing us closer to accomplishing that goal? And so we can have measurable me benchmarks, right? Are the number of homeless people decreasing? Are the number of people living on the streets decreasing? Are the number of children living on the streets decreasing? Well, if they are, then something about what we're doing as a community is working. But if they're not, then we need to scrap those policies. Without ego, without personal investment, we need to try something new. Now, I have some ideas about some new things we could try, and I'm going to talk about that in, f in future videos. But this is more about general, general approach, general management style, general philosophy. So we set a goal. We set measurable benchmarks along the way to see if we're moving towards that goal. We have a discussion and we adopt policy. If that policy is moving us towards the goal, then perhaps we double down and we do more of it. But if our current policies are not moving us towards that ultimate goal, or if, as I believe is the case with homelessness, they're actually moving us further away from the goal, then we need to scrap those policies and start over. Now, the problem is this takes us back to us versus them politics, is that with us versus them, with tribal, divisive, zero sum, us versus them politics, people begin to identify themselves with their policies. And then if somebody questions the policies, these people naturally feel defensive. They feel that you're attacking them personally. When there's no personal attack intended, it's just a question about whether a policy works or not. So we need to let go of that, that kind of prideful arrogance, that sense of ownership of policy and be willing to engage each other in conversation about whether what we're doing is working. And if it's not, then what are some other possible approaches that we can use? Um, this management style has worked very well for me here in my law firm. And I believe that it can translate very effectively to public policy as well. So I'm gonna be doing a series of these videos. Um, I want you to know more about me, my background, the experience that I bring to this position. And uh, I want you to have opportunities to ask me questions as well. And thanks for those of you who are, who are joining me right now and watching. Um, I plan to do regular Q&A videos where you, your friends, anyone can ask me questions about my philosophy of management of government of any public policy issue any concerns about state government or the issues facing us here in, in the city of seattle or in the state of washington but regardless of the questions i plan to do a series of issue specific videos um, one for sure the first one will probably be homelessness i have some ideas about homelessness i want to talk about housing and the lack of adequate housing not just in Seattle, not just in King County, but in the whole central Puget Sound area. I definitely want to talk about traffic. I want to talk about education and the environment. And we're going to get to all of these things. But again, as I've said throughout this campaign, more important than any specific issue is how we talk to each other about the issues. And if we can't let go of this Defensive, prideful tribalism, um, then we're not going to be able to talk to each other in any kind of meaningful way and, and find realistic, meaningful, effective solutions to the challenges that we face together as a community. So these videos are going to be longer than typical. You know, they say do a, do a 15 second video and put it on Instagram. These aren't Instagram videos. We're going to dig a little bit deeper. We're going to talk about policy. People want specifics. You're going to get specifics. People want unfiltered Matt Dubin. You're going to get unfiltered raw Matt Dubin. I will tell you about myself. I will tell you about my ideas and my philosophy. I'll tell you about what I think is going wrong in our state and what we could do better. But the first thing is we need representatives who listen, 
who are willing to evaluate policy after it's been adopted and who have the humility to admit when the choices that we've made aren't, aren't the best choices and aren't working out for our community the way we thought they should. And then to try something new, even if it's something that makes us a little bit uncomfortable. So I'm gonna keep doing these videos. I'm gonna put them up on YouTube. I'm gonna put them on my blog. We're gonna spread them around social media. Um, we're gonna figure out a time and date to do a regular um, Ask the Candidate video, a live video on Facebook where I'll answer your questions. And um, hopefully this will turn into a really kind of interesting, interactive conversation that we can continue from now through the November 6th general election. So that's it for now. I appreciate the comments from those of you who are joining me live. And um, hey, if anyone has any questions that you want me to address in a future video, shoot me a message or comment to this video and, and I will address it. I will answer every single question that comes in. There's no question that's dumb. There's no question that's too silly or too crazy. I'll answer your questions. So go ahead and send them in. Let's have fun with this. We've got three months, so let's really turn this into a conversation. So that's it for now. I'm Matt Dubin, and um, looking forward to having this conversation with you over the next few months. Thanks a lot.